Human beings are capable of horrifying, spine-chilling deeds. We've all heard of the worst evils inflicted upon innocence, and every year a new case stuns us into silence, making us wonder if there's a line humans won't cross. In this series, we're going to look at disturbing real-life crimes. This is Cold-Blooded Crimes. Jason Todd, born on February 17, 1973, grew up violent. He enrolled at Mulberry High School in Florida, where he would have several run-ins with the law. When he was just 18, he got into an altercation at a party with another teenager. He swung a bat at the teenager's car. The police arrested him for damage to property and aggravated assault with a weapon. But Jason accepted a plea bargain, which reduced his charges to assault. He was sentenced to a year of probation and community service. After that, Jason went on to serve in the US Marine Corps, where he achieved the rank of Lance Corporal. He started his career in the military by attending MCRD Paris Island and enrolling at the School of Infantry in North Carolina. He was initially assigned to MCB Camp Pendleton with Reconnaissance Company. He wound up a scout, an M249 light machine gun being his main weapon. It's not clear why Jason was kicked out of MCB Camp Pendleton, but his problems didn't end there. As a scout, he once turned up to field training at 29 Palms Base without his machine gun. His platoon sergeant punished him, and worse, due to his weight and a knee injury he got while playing football, his days in the military were already numbered. When Bravo Company, which Jason was assigned to, went away to serve in 1996, he did not board the USS Anchorage with them. Instead, he stayed back and started a search for illegal immigrants in the area. He was still stationed at Camp Pendleton at the time and would frequent military stores in Oceanside, California, purchasing military equipment without the military's knowledge. He would binge watch military movies and sing army songs. Jason saw himself as a patriot. That very year, as Jason spent more and more time preoccupied with searching for immigrants and buying weapons, he was still running into trouble. In fact, he was court-martialed twice during his service. The first court-martial was a result of being absent for eight days without authorization. The military authorities convicted him of unauthorized absence, failing to follow an order or regulation, and larceny and wrongful appropriation. In the end, Jason got demoted and imprisoned for three months. The second time around, things got worse. His convictions included conspiracy, assault, and wrongful solicitation and advice. The military authorities found him guilty and imprisoned him for six months. After his second court-martial, he was discharged for bad conduct. His history in the army stained his life for a long time. In 2006, 10 years after his discharge, he was meant to be the MC at a Veterans Day parade, but a local media company reported that he had been court-martialed twice, and with this news, it seemed he would no longer be able to MC. His reputation was tarnished, so standing before the parade committee, he told them, What I'd like to do at this point is to put that position back on the table, and whatever the council here decides, if they want me to be the MC, I will. If they want me to help out with trash, I'll help out with trash. Jason was 33 at the time. His life had been on a downward trajectory since he left the army, and now, facing former Marines who had served, Jason was forced to accept the truth that he wasn't a Marine after all. He never actually served and was dismissed. His involvement in the Veterans Day Parade was insulting to most veterans, who had given their lives to the army. With his past crimes out in the open, Jason lost all credibility. This especially hurt him because he had political aspirations. Just earlier that year, he had run for city council. Just a year after his humiliating exchange with veterans at the parade committee, the police pulled Jason over. He was driving a vehicle with a fake license plate and was carrying a handgun. He also had a traffic preemption emitter, which is an illegal device used to switch traffic lights from red to green. Jason was arrested on the spot. Meanwhile, Jason had started exploring white supremacist and nationalist ideologies. He eventually joined a neo-Nazi group called the New Saxons. This was in 2007. By 2009, he was at white supremacist rallies talking about purifying the USA. In his own words, this is a white European homeland. This is how it should be preserved if we want to keep it clean, safe, and pure. 
Aside from all the horrifying things he has said, he's also on record for firing a pistol at a Latino man armed with a VV gun. A year after that, he marched with a swastika banner in Omaha and gave a speech at a rally, where he was deemed an Arizona Republican activist. He also made anti-Semitic comments in a blog post, in which he also called for a pogrom against Jewish people. It was clear that Jason was treading down a darker path than he ever had before. And what's more is that he was becoming bolder in his acts of vigilantism. On June 19, 2010, he went to Pinal County, Arizona, to patrol the border. He had heard that there was a drug smuggling and illegal immigration operation in those areas, and he went out to investigate with a group called the US Border Guard, who were basically heavily armed civilians. Two years later, Jason was running for sheriff of Penal County in the hopes of reviving his political career, but this time, things would take a dark and tragic turn. Jason's first marriage was with Arlene Lindgren, but the couple divorced in 2003. Arlene was aware of Jason's interest in white supremacy, and eventually it took a toll on their relationship. His relationships never fared well after that. His latest girlfriend, Lisa Medeiros, called the police in August 2011 to report that Jason strangled her. At the time, the two had been together for two years and were living in a house owned by Lisa's ex-husband. They stayed there with Lisa's children, Amber, Brittany, and her 15-month-old baby, as well as Jim Hyatt, who was Amber's boyfriend. During Jason's campaign to be the Penal County Sheriff, Lisa was his treasurer. Their relationship hadn't fully recovered though, and on May 2nd, 2012, a fight in their home turned tragic pretty quickly. Brittany, who heard the chaos ensue from her bedroom, dialed 911. Where's your emergency? 530 West Tumbleweed Road, Gilbert Ayers on 85233. 530 West Tumbleweed and Gilbert, what's going on there? There was gunshots and my mom there and my niece and my sister are all on the floor and I think they're dead. You said gunshots and my mom. Okay, tell me, what about your mom? It was my mom's boyfriend, JT Reddy. They were fighting, they were screaming. I was in my room and now they're all dead. Okay, well, where did you hear the gunshots? I heard it coming from outside. The front door is open. They're all lying on the floor. There's blood. Okay, well, who has been shot? Do you know? My mom, Lisa Medeiros. My sister, mom, Amber Medeiros. Your mom's been shot? My mom, my sister, and my niece. Please, Your mom, your sister, and your niece have all been shot? Yes. Okay, we had, we had officers on the way. Okay, thank you. Where is he at? I don't know, I think he's gone. The front door's open. I just heard gunshots. I was in my room and I come out and they're all on the floor and there's blood. Okay, do you know if okay, do you know where he's at or where the gun is? I don't think he has lots of guns in the garage. They were fighting, there was really lots of fighting do you think in the, he's in the garage. Do you think he's I don't, in the garage? I don't know where he is. I think he left. I don't know. Okay, do you know if he has a vehicle? Yes, he has a black car. A black car? Yeah. Okay, nice. what kind of car is it? I don't know what kind of car it is. Is it a two-door or a four-door? It's a four-door. It's a four-door? It's a small you know Okay, it's a passenger car, and do you know, um, um, Okay, do you know um, anything else about it? Do you know a license plate or if it's registered to him? It's registered to him. That's okay, all I know. This, and is your boyfriend, what is his name? It's not my boyfriend, it's my mom's boyfriend. Oh, it's the mom's boyfriend? Okay, yes. what is his name? JT Reddy. Jason Reddy. Jason Reddy. Jason Reddy, and this is 530 West Tumbleweed, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Do you happen to know, ma'am? Do you happen to know what his um, how old he is? Um, I think he's uh thirty something. I don't know. Thirty something. Okay. And um, how about um, do you know where he lives? He lives with my mom here. He's been staying here. He hasn't. Okay. Okay. Do you know? Um, have you heard anything else? Where are you at in the house? I'm in my room. Okay, where is that? It's um. There's the front door. You turn right. There's a hallway, and then I'm in my room. Okay, a hallway. Go right, and then you're in the room. 
<laughs> yeah, there's a front door in the hallway. Go right. You go straight in the room right there. <laughs> okay, okay. Could I have your name? Brittany. Brittany, what's your last name? Maderos. How do you spell that? M E D E R O S. Okay. Are you injured at all? Well, no, I'm not injured. I was sleeping okay. in my bed. Okay. Did he know you were in the house? Yes. Okay. Okay. okay, I want you to stay, Brittany, I want you to stay where you're at, okay? We've got officers, we've got, actually we have an officer already there and, and others on the way. It's, tell me if you, okay, it's Brittany, you're doing a really good job, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay, do you have any idea if, if JP is still in the house? I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> are you out of your bedroom? Are you, are you out of your bedroom? Where are you at? No, I'm still in my bedroom. You are? Okay. <laughs> And uh, the door is closed, right? Yeah, yeah, it's closed. <laughs> what are you wearing, Brittany? I'm wearing a red shirt and black shorts. Black shorts and what? And a red shirt. A red shirt? Yeah. <laughs> okay. What did, do you know what Jason was wearing? No, I don't know what he's wearing. What's that? I don't know what he's wearing. <laughs> okay, what does Jason do for a living? Um, he goes to the border with his friends. They're not what a part does of he do like for a living, though? What is, he doesn't work. work. He, he, he goes doesn't to the work? States. He goes to the border and with their guns, and they go and try to find Mexicans with narcotics. So, okay, so does he, maybe, does he have an undercover job of some sort? No, he doesn't work at all. He just sits at my house. Okay. And he was trying to go for sheriff or something, and I don't know if that went anywhere, but... Okay. Do you know, okay... Uh, let's, if you're, I, I, I'm hoping that you can help me a little bit, Brittany. You're doing a great job. Can we talk about Jason just a little bit more as far as, do you know if he has a stash of weapons in the house at all? Yes, in the garage. Okay. <laughs> and I think there's a gun in my mom's room. It's really small. It's... <laughs> <laughs> no. Brittany? Yes. Okay. Um, so let's talk about Jason a little bit more. I'm going to ask you all these questions, but you're helping us, okay? Because we okay. want to, we're trying to help you. Okay, as much as we can. Okay, so can you think back about when you saw Jason today, what he may have been wearing? I didn't see him at all this morning. You Excuse haven't me. seen him at all? Okay. No, the last time I saw him was last night before I went to bed. <laughs> okay. Brittany, if you can stay with me, okay? If you can stay with me, I've got officers at your house, but I don't want you to go anywhere, okay? I want you to stay right where you are until they're coming into your house. I, Brittany, are you listening to me? Yes. Brittany, okay, listen to me. Officers are coming into your house. Do not do anything unless I tell you, okay? Okay. Do not do anything. Okay. No, no they're coming not, in the room. Okay. No, I'm, 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 I mean, if they, if they're, are they? I don't know if, I don't know if JC's here or not. Are you talking to officers? Yeah. Brittany, they're out with you? Yeah. Okay. I will give you, I will go and hang up with you then, okay? If they're good with me hanging up with you. I don't know. It only be JT that was on me. Okay. Are they wanting you to 
Can I hang up the phone? Oh, no, not yet. They're getting me. Come on, man. Come on. Okay, we need some counselors. Here. We need some counselors. Yeah, we need counselors. Reach out to every class. We got you. Are, we got you. Are you with an officer so I can I'm with an talk officer. to an officer? Yeah. Okay, do you wanna do you want me to disconnect with you or stay on the phone with you? Um I, I don't want to talk anymore. Okay, I will then I will let you talk to the officer if the officer is okay with that. Do you want to hand the officer the phone for a second? Okay. Hold on. Go ahead and have a talk. Who is it? This is this is radio. Hey, it's it's Samuel. It's Samuel. Okay. Hello. One four two six. Okay. I'm getting I'm gonna hang I'm gonna hang up this line, okay? Okay, thank you. Bye. All right, bye. When the police arrived they found that Jason had unleashed his worst on the entire family before turning the gun on himself. He had shot Lisa on her face and in the back of her head. He had killed Amber and her boyfriend and even the baby barely escaped the massacre. One police officer stated that the crime scene was so gory he saw brain tissue and blood pooling. It's unclear what drove Jason to killing Lisa and her family. He had been argumentative and violent in the past and he had a criminal history which would scare most people away. But in this particular case, it's not clear why Jason did what he did. For all the attention that Jason attracted while holding the banner of Nazism, and for all his political efforts against illegal immigrants, Jason ended his life as a cold-blooded murderer. But why did he do it? Perhaps he finally got sick of his life and fortunes debilitating, although he was the cause of all of that to begin with. And tragically, he wound up taking out his pent-up frustrations on innocent people. He had disgraced himself so much in life that he wanted to take it all out on the world, and this was his way of doing it. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this one. Until next time, 